Hi, I'm Mimi, and I'd like to invite you to do some drawing and painting and sketching with me. Here we go! Welcome to Mimi's Sketchbook, and today we're going to be painting some very easy and pretty and colorful gift boxes. Wouldn't you love to receive a gift in a box that looked like this? I know it's going to be fun and you can do it. So we're going to start off today with a sketchbook and I have my Canson mixed media sketchbook and mine is just a 7 inch by 10 inch book. And it's nice to paint in a sketchbook and draw in a sketchbook because it keeps all your paintings together. But um, if you don't have one, that's okay. You can just uh, use whatever paper you have. So I'm going to start off with making one of my presents, and I'm going to make a simple square. And as I'm drawing, I am going to try and keep my pencil very loose in my hands so I don't make dark lines. And if I keep my lines nice and light, they're so much easier to erase if I make a mistake. So I'm going to make my ribbon. And I see I just made a circle here for the loop. I'm going to make another circle here and add on the width. And I'll add another loop up here like that, and I then I'm going to add a bunch of ribbon like this, just kind of exploding out from the bow. You know what? There's no right or wrong way to do this. We can make it up and change it as we go, and it'll be just fine. Okay, so I have that done. And now I'm going to get my marker, and I'm just using a Sharpie a Ultra Fine point marker. And I'm going to keep a real loose hand with this also. And I'm not going to draw every single line. I am just going to kind of float my uh, pen over these lines and just barely touch the paper because I don't want these lines to be so bold. I want them to be just kind of to help outline the um, picture. So just a few little lines to suggest what, where the paint is going to go. So there, I'm done. It takes very little time to do that. I barely touched it. And so now I'm going to take my kneaded eraser and kind of rejuvenate it, pull it apart so it's nice and fluffy, hold my um, book down so it doesn't slide all over, and just lightly rub back and forth. And my pencil is gone just as easy as that. So I now I have a nice clean surface to work on. That's my watercolors are going to be nice and bright. And um, today, I'm using my watercolor kit here. And these are called watercolor pans, and all the colors are crossed here. And I've made a nice little chart above here to show me what the colors look like. And this is called a Koi Watercolor Pocket Field Sketchbook. Sketchbox. And uh, it's very nice. I like it. So I'm going to start off with my paintbrush here, and I've got a round, soft grip. This is a very affordable brush, um, number six round. I like these brushes, and uh, they're nice and affordable, and they do a great job. So let's start off by painting our box in, and... Just be loose with your paint. And I wouldn't worry about painting every single bit of the surface. 
I like to um, have a little paint uh, not covering the, the um, object I'm painting like this and like this and like this. It just gives it a little bit of a sparkle. And it looks, uh, gives, kind of brings our picture to life. So now I'm going to let this paint dry and find a color for my bow. And I've just uh, swizzled the tip of my brush into the paint. And I'm going to put that on. Add a little bit more because it's paints light, getting too uh, light. And then I'll do the ribbon down here. Now you can, when you you can sketch with watercolor too, and that's what we're doing. We're just kind of giving an impression. Here we're not worrying so much about about making it look realistic. We just want to create a pretty bright colored image that's fun to look at. Another day we'll talk about making and painting a box that looks three dimensional. But this one is just for fun right now. And um, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to rinse out my brush and I'm going to get another color. I'm going to go over and find a red. Just a little, I guess I could have used the magenta, but and I want my brush to be pretty dry. I don't want a lot of water in here. So I bring it over and just touch it should have done that before I loaded it up. And I'm just going to add a pattern to the box. And I want this line to be thin, so I'm going to hold my brush straight up and down. So I just use the tip of my brush. And I can make a very thin line. I'm going to go this way. Hold, I have to hold the brush straight up to get that thin line. There. And there we've got a nice little present. Isn't that great? Okay, it's very pretty, very bright. And let's try to make some more. And if you can, follow along with me and try and paint. Kind of across here so I can fit a whole bunch on this page. And I don't want to make all of my boxes the same, so I'm going to make this one a little wider. And I can change what I'm doing anytime I want, because I'm the creator here. I'm the artist, so I can change it up however I want. And I'm going to put a fun different bow on top. This bow is going to be made of concentric circles. Ooh, it's going to be something fun. And there's the end of the ribbon. Just kind of whip it up so it looks informal and fun. Okay, so now I'm going to come down to the middle of my page. I'm going to make another box a different shape. So this time my box is going to be long and shallow. All I have to do is make that rectangle. These are easy to make. Okay, they don't have to be perfect. And But on this one, I am going to make a great big luscious bow. Here, the nice wide ribbon. I'll put another one over here. I'm trying, I'm starting off kind of making a triangle. Do you see the triangle? And then I'm going to loop it around and come back here. This is a triangle over here also, a very loose, kind of curvy triangle, and then bring this down. 
This is the center of the bow here. This will be another bow, part of a bow back here. I'm only going to see part of it, but there's the inner loop. There you go. And then I'm going to make a nice wide um, bow over here. I'm going to make an S curve. See that S, how that's an S curve? And loop it up like that. Bring it in. And I'm going to bring this down even, make this even wider. Okay, and then on this side, I'm going to make another lovely S curve. See the S? And I'm going to kind of follow along that shape over here. And these curved lines are um, kind of luscious and, and uh, so organic. And they're a nice complement to the straight lines of the simple box. And so here we're going to need a ribbon to tie it down. And there we have a second box ready to go. Okay, let's turn our box and make it a little different now. I am just going to make a uh, view, turn it this way, and make it look like I'm looking down at a box. So I just see the top part of it, and I'm going to have a lot of fun making a fun, another fun bow. So here I'm going to start making that triangle and then put in the loop. I'm going to make another triangle out this way for the bow. Come back, another loop. Here's another triangle. Another loop right there. Let's make another, another edge of a short, short one. We're kind of looking at it a little differently. And there's the loop. Let's put another one under here. We could put a lot of bow edges in here. And this needs one over here. Make them all a little bit different. Maybe I'll curve this one down. There. Fatten them up. There we go. Okay, now we need um, a ribbon to attach it to the back. So we've got one up here, and one down here. So that wraps around the end of the box. And we need some pretty ribbon ends. I like these flowing ends. There's an S curve. And the cut edge, and then follow that S back in. Let's put another one over here. So here's an S curve. And bring it back in. And let's put another one. Where do we want it? Let's put this over here. I think I want the end sticking out. There, I can change it. There you go. Oh, I guess we need one over here. Just so we've got something. When you draw so lightly like this, you can change and redraw and make it the way you like it. You don't have to um, be stuck with something that you're not happy with. You can keep going back over it because it's so light, and I'm barely pressing down on my pencil. Okay, let's do something a little tiny box now. Now, these may seem like very simple projects, but these are exercising our imagination and building our skills, our watercolor skills, and it's just plain fun. Just plain fun to do. S curve and bring it back. And I need a ribbon here to tie it down. 
and then one more box to fill my page. So I'm going to start with looking down at the box again, and this is going to be a circle. Another circle. I'm going to put a ribbon in the center. Here's my center knot. And I'm going to put a triangle. The triangle ribbon edge top of it, and there's the curve. I can back and put a curve here. Put another one. I'm barely going to see my box because I'm making my ribbon so big. But that's okay. I'm having fun. Why not? Ribbons like whipped cream on top of the sundae. And for me, the more the merrier. There. That looks like a nice variety of boxes. Okay, so now I'm going to come up with my marker and I am just going to draw at all the lines but just remember I'm keeping a very light touch I'm just indicating the shape very lightly the shape of what I'm drawing oh and here's this luscious one going to add a few little curves here and there as I go to make this even. Lovelier. Nice wide ribbon. What a treat. There must be something very special in all of these Boxes. Add the little knot in the center. This is a very nice complex bow, luscious. There's so many loops. I don't know if we could actually do that and make that many loops in a bow, but guess what? I can make as many loops as I want on my painting. We're only limited by our imagination when we sit down and paint and draw. Sometimes um, it's hard to come up with patterns and different colors and different shapes. So um, this is uh, just a good way to get our brain working and coming up and uh, coming up with new ideas. And I like to be inspired. I look around, I look in magazines and catalogs and um, all different kinds of resources to find ideas to do paintings and drawings. And uh, so look around and find things to help you stimulate your imagination. Once again, I use my kneaded eraser just to clean this up. Hold it down so your book or your paper doesn't slide, which I'm doing here. It goes very quickly. And now we get to paint. So I'm going to just take and put a light mist on my watercolors so they are activated. Rinse out my brush, and I've got two um, containers of water here. This first one is to wash my brush, get all the paint out, and this is the second one to keep the water in my brush nice and clean. 
Okay, so I am going to mix up a color that I like, and I'm going to mix it right here on my painting. And that's a lemon yellow. I like a lime or lemon yellow color. And you usually have to mix it because I can't find it. So I can mix right here on this paper. Now this is a mixed media paper and I can do that on this. If I was trying to do this on a sketch paper or on just uh, a, a regular pad, it would be hard to do. So that's why a mixed media paper or a watercolor paper is nice to work on. It works with you instead of against you. Okay, now I want a color to be really bright here, a nice contrast. And this, so I'm going to use a purple up against this lime green. And purple and lime green are called complementary colors because when they're used next to each other, um, they are brighten each other up. They complement each other. So here, I've got that goofy. It's a goofy one. Goofy kind of um, ribbon, but hey, it's fun. Okay, I'm going to let this dry and come back and add some detail to that. And But in the meantime, I'm going to come over here and I am going to just paint in my ribbons. Just going to do a nice light color. And this, if this is a little too dark right here, I can just come and lift some color out of here and use it to paint the rest of the ribbon. You don't need much watercolor. You need, you can use, have one container of watercolor might last you your whole life depending on how often you use it because you really don't need to use very much. So now here is I've just put kind of a medium light color on here and now I'm going to choose um, a little darker color. I'm going to find a little um, turquoise green color to put on my brush and I'm going to come in here and add it into the little interiors of these um, ribbons and like the underneath of this one and maybe a little bit right here to add a little bit of shadow. So wash it off and I'm going to dry my brush a little bit and then come in and blend this. Just blend it. It's a little too, a little too bold. Maybe I'll add a little bit up here. Nice thing about watercolors, I can play with it. I got too light. move it around, I can lighten it, I could darken it, and I'm going to just lift a little of that color there, dry my brush, lift a little more, lift a little more, clean off my brush. Got a little dark. And then I'll lift a little more. There. That looks pretty good. And add a bit of color back in here. Got a little too bland. There, that's pretty good. Alright, and I'm going to go to a nice blue and paint in the lid of my box. Here. I'm going to make the lid solid. And 
And then I'm going to use the tip of my brush to make a pinstripe coming down. It really adds a lot of life to this box, doesn't it? I can just take my finger and do that and lift a little color off of here. I might go back in here to darken this up just a little bit. I'll play. I'll let it dry and look at it. But it's kind of fun to make those shadows inside of the um, ribbon. Keep it all in that blue-green scheme. Okay. Rinse off my brush. I think I've got my waters mixed up. but Oh, well. Let's get a bright... Red. Let's get a real pretty bright red here for this one. And I've got to get these corners, so I'm going to tip my brush up and do this detail here. And it's always nice to know how to use a brush and create different kinds of brush strokes. So you can look at my video about brush strokes and practice making some wide ones and some skinny ones and um, all different kinds of brush strokes with just one brush. All you need is one brush to do it. You don't need a lot of brushes. So I'm going to rinse that out and I'm going to let that dry for a minute and go to another box while that dries. I want it to dry because I'm going when I go to paint the ribbon in, I don't want the colors to uh, bleed into each other. And um, it just, it's easier just to let one thing dry and then to go back and finish it up when it is so the colors don't bleed. If one wet area touches another wet area of watercolor, that's what's going to happen. So we don't want to do that. So it just Artists often work on several projects or ideas at one time um, for many different reasons, and one of them is to um, let the paint dry in between, if we're, especially if you're working in watercolor. Okay, so there's that one. And let me get a different kind of color. Got to make sure I don't have a drip there. And I'm going to get a Prussian blue. I think that'll be nice. It's very dark. I'm gonna take off a little bit of paint just by touching my paper towel. One side's light and one side's dark. Gonna have to even them up. Need a little tiny bit more of water. This little koi box is so nice, but there's 48 colors, and it's um, sometimes it's hard to remember which color I had used. So that's why it's good I have this chart. I can look up at the chart. So. There's that tiny little gift. And can I go back to this one? I think I can. Um, what I do is I look to see if the paint is shiny. And if it's not, if it's uh, dry, then it's no longer shiny and I can paint it. So I'm going to put a, uh, I think I'll put a yellow in here and go over these with a yellow. I see I have a drop here. I'm going to clean that off. I don't want that dripping down into my paint. Just go ahead and... If, I've got, if I can see I've got a lot of paint in one area, I can just go grab some of that paint and 
use it somewhere else instead of going into my paint box or the paint pan. If the color is uh, the density that I like, it's fine to do. I think I'm just going to though make it a little denser because this is. I want all of these to be pow, have that pow factor. Make it really make it bright and beautiful. That looks better. A little bolder color. Okay. And I am going to paint this last little one here. And I'm going to mix up again a little of that lime, lemon lime paint. I'm going to do it over here in the paint tray this time. Got a little green. I do love the lemon lime color. And let's see how this looks. I think I can do better. I'm going to start in a different spot. There must have been a different color there. Go into my yellow over here. Well, that's going to be brighter. Let's see. That's nicer. Very pretty color. Might be able to brighten that up a little bit. Mixing colors, it's so nice to be able to mix colors. And it it you'll be able to do it. You just have to take a little time and practice. Just takes a little bit of practice to mix colors. Okay, wash out my brush, get that out of there, and wipe it off, and then I'm gonna find a I'll let it dry and come back up here and um, make a design up here on my box. And so I'm going to go into the magenta. And just with the tip of my brush, I want to make sure I don't put my hand in anything wet. I'm going to make some little circles kind of running off my page and on my page. I've got stripes and zigs or cross crosses plaid type and uh, these are pretty plain but very jazzed up with their colors. I'm just suggesting these circles but the person looking at it understands it's a nice pattern. That's fine. And I'm going to use that same color here. This box is just peeking out from under this. This is pretty silly. But hey, I like it. Oh, I got one more thing to do. I want to jazz up this... Um, ribbon here. I'm going to get a little different color. Just make sure I don't put my hand in anything. What This is what I do to um, keep my hand from getting in. I use my other hand as kind of a little brace and uh, it holds it up so I don't smear something when I'm working. It's a good trick to do. It comes in very handy. So I'm just going to follow the direction of the ribbon and put in some stripes. It adds a lot of uh, pizzazz to this package, to that ribbon. Wow. That must be something really wonderful in this box. And there you go. There are our packages ready for um, to give. They're bright. They're pretty. You can continue to add some um, additional patterns to it. 
and designs. I think I want to sit here for a while and paint some polka dots on here. And um, you can do whatever you want on yours, but the most important thing is to have fun. So thanks for visiting Mimi's sketchbook and check out my other videos. And I'd be glad to take some comments. And I'd love to see some of your artwork. So, thanks for stopping by and go paint.